Hello friends, this video on molecular basis of inheritance part 22 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us discuss the process of transcription. So the process of transcription, uh, RNA polymerase plays the leading role because this helps to create the copy of RNA looking at the sequence or reading the sequence on the template strand of DNA. So RNA polymerase is going to play the main role in the process of transcription. So the entire process of transcription involves three major steps and they are initiation, elongation and termination. So these are the three steps by which the process of transcription takes place. So let us understand the process step by step. So we'll start with initiation. So let us see what happens during initiation. So RNA polymerase binds to the promoter of transcription unit of DNA. So that is what will actually initiate the entire process. So we need RNA polymerase for transcription. So RNA polymerase has to come in contact with the transcription unit and that will happen through the promoter. So this is the DNA. This defines the transcription unit of DNA that is promoter and terminator. So this is the beginning. This is the ending. So this portion is going to be the transcription unit, this entire portion. So now RNA polymerase will come and it will bind to the promoter region. Okay. So then RNA polymerase combines with the sigma factor and forms a hollow enzyme. Now what is sigma factor? So sigma factor is a protein which is needed for initiation of RNA synthesis. Now when I say RNA polymerase binds to promoter, what is promoter? It is nothing but a a region of DNA. So in that region of DNA, there is a protein called a sigma factor. So the polymerase will actually combine with this sigma factor and it will form a hollow enzyme. What is hollow enzyme? Hollow enzyme is nothing but any enzyme which is a protein plus the coenzyme. So enzyme plus coenzyme is hollow enzyme. What is coenzyme? It is the non-protein part or non-protein component which is necessary for the functioning of the enzyme. So basically here RNA polymerase is the RNA polymerase and sigma factor will join together and they will form the hollow enzyme. So now once hollow enzyme is formed, now why this hollow enzyme is formed? Because the contribution is sigma of sigma factor is necessary for the functioning of RNA polymerase. So now transcription initiation is more complex in eukaryotes when compared to the prokaryotes. Why? Because in eukaryotes, RNA polymerase doesn't directly recognize the promoter sequences. So it is not able to read the promoter sequences directly. So they, in case of eukaryotes, some separate transcription factors are present which mediate the binding process. That means they will inform RNA polymerase about uh, which portion is the promoter. Again, they will bind it to the promoter. So they actually have as a mediator between RNA polymerase and the promoted region. So only after certain transcription factors are attached to the promoter, RNA polymerase will be able to bind to it. So in case of eukaryotes, in case of we, eukaryotes, we have a couple of transcription factors which act as mediator for the binding of RNA polymerase to the promoter region. Or, but otherwise, in the process of initiation, basically what happens is RNA polymerase bind to the promoter region of DNA. But how will it bind to the promoter region? There are some factors known as sigma factors which are essential for the functioning of the enzyme RNA polymerase. So RNA polymerase will combine with the sigma factor and it will form a hollow enzyme. So this is how the process of initiation will start. Now, another important thing to be noted here is whenever I it is asked where is the transcription unit of a DNA. So the transcription unit will always be defined by the promoter and the uh, terminator. So now the moment if, if I exchange the promoter and the terminator uh, location, for example, if the promoter is shifted this side and if the terminator is shifted this side, what will happen? It can even change the coding strand and the template strand because 
because the promoter and the terminator together defines which who will act as the promoter uh, uh, as the template strand which will act as the coding strand because when the location changes everything changes for example let me give you an example let us suppose this is one strand this is another strand so this strand is running from 3 prime to 5 prime this strand is running from 5 prime to 3 3 prime let us suppose this is where the promoter is located right now as we all know the promoter always locate is located towards the 5 prime end of the coding strand so if this is the location of the promoter that means that this is the coding strand and this is going to be the template strand right so it is the location of the promoter which defines which one will be the coding strand and which one will be the template strand Similarly, let us consider another scenario where you have two strands running from 3 prime to 5 prime and 5 prime to 3 prime. And in this case, you have a promoter which is located here. So how will you know which one is the template and which one is the coding? So promoter will always be located towards 5 prime of coding strand. So in this case, this will become the coding strand and this one will become the template strand. So basically the position of the promoter and the terminator decides which strand will be coding strand and which strand will be uh, template strand. So their position is extremely important and also the position of the promoter will only define where the RNA polymerase will come and bind to the transcription unit. So from the promoter region only the RNA polymerase will start reading the structural genes and finally it will end at the uh, terminator region. So let us look at the next step that is elongation. What happens after the RNA polymerase has binded to the uh, promoter region? So now RNA polymerase will facilitate the opening of the helix. So here also, right now the DNA is like a tightly bound double-stranded structure. But we need one strand of DNA to act as the template strand for synthesizing RNA. So for that purpose, we need to unwind the two strands of dna right so how it will be how it will happen so here you can see this was the double stranded dna now this is the region where the rna polymerase binds to the dna now as the rna polymerase moves further what it does it keeps on opening the two strands of dna so you see that coiling is gone so the two strands of dna has been separated in the transcription unit so this basically denotes the transcription unit now once the rna polymerase reaches the terminator region what will happen again these two strands which were earlier separated by the enzyme which again again start winding up with each other to form back the double helix structure so here you can see that RNA polymerase traverses the template strand. So black one is the template strand and pink is the coding strand. Now as the RNA polymerase moves across the template strand, so it moves in which direction? It traverses from 3 prime to 5 prime direction. So let us suppose this is 3 prime and this is 5 prime and this is our template strand. So along the direction of the template strand, RNA polymerase will move. So the transcription will happen in which direction? Now it will read, the polymerase enzyme will actually read the uh, sequence of bases and corresponding to that, it will create the complementary bases. And this strand which will get produced will be the RNA strand. And this strand will be synthesized in 5 prime to 3 prime direction because both has to be anti parallel. So since this is 3 prime to 5 prime, so this one which will get generated would be 5 prime to 3 prime. So a copy of RNA is created using complementary base pairing. So that means wherever you have, you see different colors, right? That is for let us say A, G, T, C, A, G, T. If you have it like this, so here also you will have the corresponding sequence. Like maybe you will have it like this, say U, C, A, G, U, C, a and so on so similarly you will have it now it has been it will be observed that finally this mrna strand which gets created by this rna polymerase is exactly identical to this coding strand except that the thymine is being replaced by uracil so that would be the only difference but otherwise this rna strand will be exactly identical to that of the coding strand 
So elongation also in involves proofreading to replace the incorrectly matched bases. Now sometimes it might happen that the RNA polymerase might encounter an error or it, it might commit a mistake. Let us suppose some incorrect pairing has been done. So there is a provision to proofread and to correct the in, uh, mistake but the DNA proofreading is more efficient than that of RNA proofreading and that is primarily because of the double stranded structure of DNA. So this process is known as elongation because uh, this RNA polymerase enzyme tries to unwind the two strands of DNA and it elongates this portion where the uh, actual transcription takes place. So that is why this process is known as elongation. So here you can see this region, you can see it starts to unwind and again in this region it rewinds back. So here it will unwind and as soon as it reaches the terminator region, so the back portion which was unwinded starts getting rewinded again. So this is how transcription will take place. I mean this is the elongation phase and now the last phase that is the termination phase. So what will happen here? Now RNA polymerase first comes, it attaches to the promoter and initiates it. So that is the initiation phase. Then it elongates the DNA transcription unit and then it starts working on the structural genes. So corresponding to those genes it creates a copy of RNA which is exactly identical to the coding strand. Now what happens? Now as it traverses through the this portion, now RNA polymerase travels through this portion and finally it encounters a portion of the DNA where it encounters with the rho factor. And what is this rho factor? Rho factor is the termination factor. Like how you had the sigma factor. So sigma factor was the initiation factor and rho factor so rho factor is the termination factor. So please remember sig sigma factor initiation and rho factor termination. Now as soon as the RNA polymerase comes in contact with these factors, it changes the functionality of RNA polymerase. So the RNA polymerase gets this information that okay, this is the time to stop the process of transcription. So rho factor destabilizes the interaction between template strand and newly formed RNA. Let us suppose here a new strand will be formed as soon as this RNA polymerase reaches the rho factor what happens? The RNA polymerase gets a message that the transcription process has to be stopped and also the connection between the newly formed RNA and this template strand. So this is the template strand and this would be the newly formed RNA. So the connection between these two is lost and as a result RNA comes out of this portion that is it comes out of the transcription unit. So the newly formed RNA falls off the elongation complex. So here you can see this is the newly formed RNA. So this one. So this newly formed RNA will then fall off this elongation complex and it will be released. Now where will it go now? Just for your information where is this entire process taking place? Now this entire process is taking place on the DNA and where is DNA? DNA is inside the nucleus. So inside the nucleus itself duplication that is replication of DNA takes place. Transcription also takes place inside the nucleus. But this RNA which is being produced it comes out of the elongation complex of DNA but it still remains inside the nucleus. Again after a few processes take place the mature RNA finally moves out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm. Right? So that is how the entire process happens. So this is how the new trans, this is how the termination will take place. So basically the initiation and termination is all controlled by the sigma factor and the rho factor. So whenever RNA polymerase meets any of these, it combines with them and it is given a message. Uh, the there is a change in the specificity of the enzyme that is there is a change in the enzyme to either initiate a process or to terminate a process. So after this, after termination, the RNA polymerase enzyme dissociates and this process of transcription stops. And what happens to the portion of DNA that was uh, like unwinded, that means the uh, strands were being separated, they will get, get back to their previous helical structure. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, Get free study material, find tutors and mentors.
Thank you once again.